Next, today marks the first day of a UK-wide visit by a UN special investigator into poverty across this country. It comes several weeks, as you know, after the Prime Minister declared austerity was over, followed by the Chancellor announcing austerity was coming to an end. Is it? The latest figures by the charity, the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, suggest that 14 million people live in poverty here in this country. Four million of those are children. And the Institute for Fiscal Studies, which is an economic research institute, predicts that numbers will rise to 5.2 million by 2021. The UN's Philip Holston, Alston will spend the next two weeks speaking to people up and down the country about their experiences of being poor. And he'll summarise how well the government's responding to the needs of the people once his time in the UK is done. The public was invited to send in written submissions about the issues that matter to them. And those letters included everything from universal credit to child poverty to pensions. In the studio this morning, Louisa McGeehan, who is Head of Policy at the Child Poverty Action Group. That's one of the charities that wrote to Philip Alston. Sheila Jones also submitted a letter. She's a nurse who feels women over the age of 50 are losing out on thousands of pounds in state pensions. And Gileson Hosha is here. He's someone who struggled with housing. Plus, in Inverness, Alex Tiffin. He also wrote to Philip Alston. He's had issues with universal credit since it was introduced. Um, welcome all of you. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Sheila, you say you've missed out on thousands of pounds since the retirement age for women was raised. How's that affected you? <clears throat> well, for me, I'm 65 now. I reached pension age this year. I've actually lost four years and nine months of pension. I was due to retire or receive my pension at age 60. But with two years to go to age 60, um, I found out, and just because I went onto the HMRC website, that I was not going to be able to retire until I was 63. And a few months later, I then found out I can't retire until I'm almost 65. Then, with just literally um, six months to go till my retirement age this year, I then found out that I will not receive, along with about 80% of other people, I will not receive this new state pension figure of £165. And how do you feel about all of that? I feel oh, very let down, very angry. I mean, I sort of accepted that, that the pension age had gone up, nothing I could do about that. But it just seems as though they're chipping away at um, our funding for absolutely everything. And, and, and in future, we, we can't increase our, um, our spending power. Once we're retired, that's it. OK. So. Let me bring in Jelson, if I may. Hello, thank you for coming on our programme. You thank have you. been served with an eviction notice, I understand, to get out of your privately rented flat, which is paid for by housing benefit. The landlord wants you to leave. Can a visit by someone from the UN make any difference to someone like you, Jelson? I don't, I don't think so. Not, not directly, at least, because... I think they probably will look at the overall picture, but they actually will not be able to see what's actually happening on the ground. Mm. Um, I actually live um, just around the corner from where they, the, 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 the boy was uh, stabbed on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. it's, a, uh, it's a very um, rough area and there's so many people in need in there and I don't see uh, officials or from the, the council going around actually um, trying to find out about our situations or trying or how or try to improve actually um, the relation between the council and the tenants uh, of private and social housing to actually know what's going on in people's lives. They don't know what people live actually inside, how they live inside of their homes. Yeah. Uh, they might look okay uh, to the outside world, but once they shut that door, they've got so much problems that it's, it's, it's hard to begin to say. The list is extremely long okay. and yeah. I'm going to bring in Alex. Thank sure. you, Jarson. Alex, you, like many people, have had problems with universal credit, and at one point you and your son were left with 20 quid for food to last you a whole month. Can yeah. you describe to our audience how you coped? Not very well at first, if I'm completely honest. It was like that for about a year because I took the advance, which the DWP, are, they always give that as the answer to helping out for the waiting period, but then they decided to take back £125 a month off my standard 317 so I had £190 a month for food and bills and my two children who I take every Friday to Sunday, so food banks came into play pretty 
pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, may, it will make no difference to you, but the government say they're putting much more money into universal credit from next year. They're reducing the time you wait for your first payment. Um, I mean, when someone like, like this man from the UN comes, is it going to help you in any way? What, what is the point of it? Well, th that, that's yet to be seen because after last year, the UN says they were creating a human catastrophe for the disabled. The government took over a year to respond. So I'm not hopeful, but I have been in correspondence with Philip Alston's office mm -hmm. himself, and this... He's been to many third world countries suffering from extreme poverty and malnutrition. Yet the UK, he announced on his Twitter last week that he got the most submissions he's ever had, which he sees as quite significant. And he's even, before he came on Friday, he tweeted out blasting the UK for being the sixth richest country yet having such extreme poverty. So hopefully it will put pressure on the government, but they're only recommendations. So, and the government, the current government seem to ignore nor them so hopefully it can be pressure that's put upon the government but whether it'll change anything I, I really don't know. Louise McGeehan you're from the Child Poverty Action Group government uh, tell us in a statement UK has a close working relationship with UN bodies and is committed to upholding the rule of law and rules based international systems household incomes have never been higher there are one million fewer people living in absolute poverty than in 2010 including 300,000 children poverty rates are falling while the employment rate is increasing, which is really encouraging, and we're committed to ensuring that every child gets the very best chances in life. We would disagree with that quite strongly, that we are facing a child poverty crisis in this country, and strongly welcome the UN Rapporteur coming and seeing for himself and shining an independent light on what we all see every day around us in the UK. And what do we all see every day around us in the UK, do you well, say? Well, families with children have been particularly badly affected by the cumulative effects of this government's austerity measures. So what we've seen <coughs> is all our social security benefits um, for people in work or tax credits for, for people in work or out of work have been frozen at the level they're in for we're in our fourth year of a freeze now and that's had a major impact. Along with that, families are also having to cope with a benefit cap which um, breaks a link between what they need and what they get in way of support. And now we have a two-child policy which says that actually the only children in a family who will get support are the first two children, any further children so get So when no they say one support. million fewer people are living in absolute, absolute poverty than in 2010, well, that's that a case of choosing your measures, I think. That is um, true, you know, though. We, we say that there are 4 million children currently in poverty, and the IFS predict that by 2020 we'll be looking at 5 million. Um, a recent study by um, a group of people from across the political spectrum and academia um, looked at a new measure of poverty in the Social Metrics Commission, and they came up with a child poverty measure even higher than ours, and they came up at 4.5 million. So, you know, one of, the, one of the real benefits of having the rapporteur's visit is he will go around the country and see for himself what, what you know, we've been working with um, teachers, with health workers who are all seeing the absolute impact of poverty on families in this country. Okay. And it's those impacts, I think, that are, you know, much more significant for people than any kind of, um, you know, data-driven sure. way of looking at it. When you see children who are going to school too hungry to learn, you're seeing families not being able to have a child discharged from hospital because they haven't got the basic standards of housing that they need to be able to bring their child home. We're seeing it in all different areas. Okay. Um, I met with um, people from Udstore on Friday who represent shop workers mm -hmm. and said, you know, of their people who are working in supermarkets, some of them are in employment but so poorly paid that they themselves are having to go to a food bank to feed their families. Okay. And it's these illustrations I think we need to look at. Okay, no doubt you will pass them on to uh, the UN uh, investigator. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you. coming on to the programme.